everyone, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Pen. This is our final episode so far of Making Comics with Procreate. Today, talking about the last step in the process. Speech balloons. One of the uh, smallest, but probably one of the most important pieces of actually making a comic. So let's talk about how I use the Procreate app to draw these in my own comics. As you can see here, this is the comic strip that we've been working on so far in my uh, previous example videos. You can see Olivia Finnegan having a conversation, or at least they would be if there was any dialogue. Currently, there is not. It's all just drawings. So it has the basic makeups of the comic. We went through sketching outlining uh, how I personally like to color and shade my comics. But so far, the two main characters here aren't really saying anything that we, the reader, can visually see. So maybe, you know, we should, uh, we should try to fix that. Let's see what we can do about that then. Now, when it comes to using the Procreate software, to make these speech balloons or speech bubbles or thought bubbles, whatever name you want to call them by. It's just a way for the characters in your comics to visibly get their dialogue across to the reader, as you know. Also, you can probably hear Olivia beeping in the background. She is actually not in the room with me. She is down the hall in her room on top of her cage with the door closed but you can still probably hear her beeping and squeaking. So uh, apologies for that noise, but I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Anyway, getting back to speech balloons. When you're using the Procreate software to make these in your comics, the, the one downside is that there isn't really any kind of ready-made template available uh, when you go to add text or in any of your tools for pulling in, you know, a, a typical cartoon speech bubble that you would typically see. Um, but in all honesty, I think that that's actually for the best because that means that you're able to customize your balloons and your text that much more. So I actually like the fact that there isn't some kind of standard template that you just drag and drop. This gives you a lot more flexibility and creative control. So I will show you how I do text with my comics. And you'll probably hear some clicking as I get my keyboard ready. I like to have that with me. It makes it a lot easier for when I'm typing. So the first thing we're going to do Everyone say it with me, add a layer. And this one is actually going to go over top of everything else we've done with all of our coloring and shading the ink. And this is gonna go over top of everything because a lot of these bubbles um, likely will overlap where characters and different background elements are. Um, so it's nice to not have to worry about going back and racing lines later. So we'll make sure that layer is above everything. And the first thing we're going to do when making these speech bubbles is not to draw the bubble itself. We're going to use the text first. And this is so that um, you know how big the text is, how much space it takes up, where to place it before you draw the balloon around it. So that's, again, that's just all personal preference, but I like to put the text in first. When you're adding text, um, with Procreate, you can see you have lots and lots of fonts you can choose from. And picking out the right one, it just kind of depends on the tone of what kind of comic you're going for. Like, you know, say if you're going for some kind of detective noir comic, you might want to use American Typewriter. Or if, you know, you're doing something a little bit more lighthearted and whimsical, you might go for Chalkboard or Chalk Duster. Or, again, if you're going for something more serious, copper plates, you have tons of, tons of fonts to choose from. This is the one I, the Jack Armstrong, I typically use that for floof and feathers. It, it, it's kind of, it's not too serious, but it's not an over-the-top, like, 
Comic Sans. Uh, funny, that one was specifically developed for comics, and even among a lot of comic artists, it has kind of a eh, iffy reputation. So I'll go ahead and select my font. Uh, I find that a size 40 uh, usually works for, for at least the, the comic panels that I use. Again, you it, whatever size you use, it's all up to you. So I'll go ahead and pick that. Something else to note when you are doing text for comics. You always want to make sure, uh, and you can see it here, that you are writing in all caps. Oh, that's not what I wanted to click. There we go. Uh, you want to make sure you're writing in all caps. This just gives the text a little bit more of a uniform look across the board, and the capital letters uh, tend to be more universally legible versus a mix of capital and lowercase. This, it, ju it just helps with, uh, with visibility and legibility. So we'll go ahead and uh, get our not texts, thank you. So we'll go ahead and start typing out our text for this comic here. Okay, so we have our text added now, so we can place it and see where it's all going to go. Now that we have that ready, we can start adding the actual speech balloons around it. So, go up to our layers, and again, we'll add another one. Make sure this is over top of the text. Get your pen. Make sure you have a nice inking. I like to use the studio pen under the inking brush. And we'll size it down to, actually size it up to about a 10. And then what we do is hold your pen, just give it a nice oval around the text, and then you can, whoop, <laughs> and I clicked away too soon. Make a nice oval around your first text and hit edit shape. And then you can go ahead and adjust all the points Make it as wide or as narrow as you need, adjust it around the words, and there you go. We'll do the same over here. Make sure we actually click edit text. There we go. And do the same here. Now, for this last panel, we're going to do something a little bit different with these bubbles, because you can see here these first three, Olivia and Finn, are having kind of a quiet, calm conversation, just talking in normal, in normal dialogue. Here, though, uh, they are excited, they're panicked, and we want to visually get that across in the speech balloon as well. So instead of just drawing a boring old oval, we we'll zoom in on this a little bit closer... We're gonna, hmm, let's try that again. And give it some jagged lines for a sense of urgency and excitement. There we go. Perfect. And now, of course, we'll go back and give all these balloons just a quick little tail to direct the dialogue to who is speaking. That one a little bit longer. And then we'll do the same over here. And then last but not least, Pick out your eraser. You're gonna want that. You're not gonna want that at a hundred percent for this. Bring it down to, you know, again maybe a ten, and go back and just erase that line between the bubble and the tail. 
just like that. And you can do that as you go. I just wanted to save it to do everything for, for its own step. Go ahead and erase all of a little too much there. There we go, that's better. So now we have our text, we have the bubbles. Now we just need to fill them in. So pick out your pen again uh, and fill those in. Just white bubbles, that seems to be the pretty standard stands out well against the black text. Now again, we're going to add another layer, but this one, we're going to drop all the way down to behind all of the text, and I'll show you why. If we left this layer up here, well, and actually, first, before we even do that, select your layer that has the text bubbles on it, and you're going to want to click on that and alpha lock. And why is that? Well, because, if you don't have alpha lock turned on, when you go to fill that in, it just fills in everything. And that's not what we're looking for. So you wanna turn on alpha lock for the bubbles. Now when you're filling it in again, if you weave that layer up top, when you drop that in, or actually, sorry, not alpha lock. <laughs> You wanted to make that a reference layer. And even with the reference layer, it fills up the bubble, but it covers up the text because it's over top of everything else. So you want to take that layer and drop it behind all of your text. And then you can just drag and drop that in. It fills up the bubble perfectly, and there you go. Now, you could do the same for these ones here, but whenever whenever I do these, these jagged-lined, uh, excited bubbles, I, I never want to use just the, the plain old white color. That feels a little bit boring. When, again, we want a sense of urgency. You want to set it apart. You want to make it exciting. So I will actually pick out this nice bright yellow, maybe not make it quite so vibrant, but uh, but again just to give it a little splash of color. And there it is. And uh, that's really all it takes to make your speech bubbles with Procreate. Again, there, there's not any kind of ready-made template for it for comics, but the process of typing your text, setting it, and just drawing the little oval around is uh, pretty pretty easy to do. It's, it's pretty user-friendly, very easy to get the hang of. If you like this video, then consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. You might also want to consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash floofandfeatherscomic or giving me a follow on social media. Links to everything are, of course, in the description below. And, of course, be sure to leave me a comment letting me know what you might like to see in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.